All right there. Hi again. My name is Monica Maruschek and I'm the founder and owner of Nova Hypnosis and Wellness. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the second reason why people are usually stuck in their problems. So the people in your life, the people in your life may be contributing to you being stuck in your problem. Now, don't get me wrong. I am 1000% convinced that each one of us is 100% responsible for our behaviors, our beliefs, the actions we choose to take or do not take or decisions, we are responsible. So I am not blaming your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your friend, your boss, whatever it is. I am not blaming them. What I am saying is that the way we interact with those people may be contributing to us being stuck in the problem, or it may be liberating us and allowing us to move forward and progressing. So here's the main issue that I see from working with thousands of clients over the years. The main issue that I see is that we care about the people in our life. We want them to like us. We want to like them as well. And whenever we try to make a big change, like becoming a non-smoker or losing weight and becoming healthy or becoming really successful at work, whatever the case may be, sometimes the people in our life despite their best intentions, don't want us to change. They want us to stay the same because it's reassuring to them. If let's just say you're a smoker and you hang out with smokers, your smoker friends are going to want you to keep smoking. They may know it's better for you if you quit. They may know it's better for them if they quit. But you know that saying, misery loves company? I'm not saying they're miserable, but company loves company. So like loves like. People like to associate with people who are like them. So when we have relationships with people and those relationships are with people with unhealthy habits that we are trying to change, often we'll have this struggle. Well, you know, if I don't eat my mother's food, even though I know it's unhealthy, she'll be hurt. I don't want to hurt her. Now I'm eating things I shouldn't be eating. Now I'm upset. And so there's this vicious cycle of making progress and then coming back to old habits, making progress and coming back to old habits, making progress and coming back to old habits. And that gets draining. That drains you that, you know, you lose your mojo, you lose your um, focus, you lose your desire to, to keep trying, right? So what do you do? Well, what you do, number one, is you learn how to protect yourself while still loving on the people in your life. So we all need to learn how to get ourselves mentally and emotionally and physically prepared for interacting with the people in our life. Whether that person is your boss or your parent or your sister or just a friend, we need to be present and aware of who we are showing up as. So if you're showing up as a confident person who is completely committed to making progress and who at the same time loves and appreciates the person on the other end, then you will have the strength within yourself to treat that person well, with no judgment, with no animosity, with no resentment. You will have the strength to treat that person lovingly and at the same time, treat yourself with respect and continue to follow through with your desired outcomes, your desired steps that are gonna get you to your outcome. So in other words, for example, you go home and you know that you're, family members want you to eat a certain way because it's how they eat and you have certain stand, new standards for yourself or new um, behaviors for yourself that you believe will get you to where you need to be. What do you do? Number one, before you leave your house or before you step into their home, you do what is called, you can call it by different names, but it's an anchor. So it's something you say to yourself maybe a gesture like a like you slap your thigh or you you know give yourself a little chest bump or whatever it is you might just snap your finger 
everybody has a different anchor that they want to use. And that anchor is something that generates in you conviction, certainty, clarity. It puts you in a mental and emotional state where you're at your best. Okay, so before you step into the home of the person who you love dearly, but who is also your kryptonite, right? It's just your kryptonite for going back to old habits. You, you put yourself in a very confident state. You put yourself at a peak state at your best. So you can be your best before you walk into that door. And after you make that gesture or say that word and you step into the room, now you're engaging with that person or those people from a place of love. So you're not judging them. You're not trying to change them. You're not trying to do anything to influence them other than being your best self. That is your only responsibility. Be your best self. Be in a peak emotional, mental, and physical state. Be grounded and in the moment. And treat them with love. And I know the word love is a little bit like squishy, but it's not. When we are open, when we accept people for who they are, and when we give from our heart, like, you know, I just want the best for you. And in this moment, accepting you for who you are is the best that I can give and being appreciative and being grateful for your kindness and your generosity. That's love. That's all it is. Gratitude and appreciation is love. And so again, this could be your family. It's pretty easy to love on your family. It could be your boss. You could be at work and your boss is a toxic individual. Your boss is totally your kryptonite. Your boss makes you feel so nervous. But if you can find something to appreciate about that person, even if what they're doing is technically very negative or toxic, there's something that that person is doing or Maybe they're hurting in some way, and you can appreciate that they're hurting. And so you look at them in a different light from, oh, you're this villain who's always putting me down, or this villain who's always um, hurting my feelings or dragging my confidence into the toilet. If you can say, you know what, you're doing that because you are hurting. You as the the boss, the, the villain are hurting. Then you can come interact with them in a much more a respectful way where you see them as separate from you, their comments bounce off of you, you are in complete certainty that what you're doing and what you're saying and what you're about to do is the right thing. And in that way, by creating that gap in that space, you give yourself the respect you need to follow through on your plans, your new habits, your new outcomes. And at the same time, you allow that person to be themselves. So again, the second reason why people often stay stuck in their problems is because they have toxic people in their life who they love dearly or who they just can't get away from. I call them kryptonite. Everyone's got their kryptonite. And by anchoring in your body and in your vocabulary, the words you use, a reminder of how to be in a strong, confident, peak emotional, mental, and physical state, you can interact with these people in a way that respects them for who they are, allows them to be who they are, and at the same time gives you the space to do what you need to do to get to your desired outcome. So just because they do what they do doesn't mean you need to do something different you need to just follow your own convictions and treat them with love. So follow your own convictions, treat them with love. Follow your own convictions, treat them with love. And in that way, potentially you can influence them in a positive way, but you're doing it without trying to change anyone or anything. So in our sessions, we identify who the toxic people are in your life we help you to create a plan for how you're going to interact with them so that when you do make progress, which you will make progress through our programs, you're not sliding back into old behaviors because you're coming into old situations where old habits are present 
and not being prepared. So we help you to prepare for all these situations again, which is why we don't do single sessions because there's no way we could address the toxic kryptonite people in your life and really prepare you and anchor you for making change last in one session. And so we're all about results. We're all about taking you, helping you go from where you are to where you want to be, right? You remember that, that diagram from the previous video? And part of that is helping you to protect yourself from the people in your life who may not be as supportive as you'd like them to be. So if you have any questions, this is something we can talk about in the 15-minute phone consultation. This is also something that we help you identify during the initial assessment. And this is something that we help people with on an ongoing basis, even after they've reached their goal, but they want maintenance and they want to continue being supported beyond the initial uh, success that they came in for. So now stay tuned for the third video where I talk about the questions that you ask yourself and how they might be limiting your ability to find solutions to your problem.